After I broke up with my husband after a 25 year marriage, one of my biggest fears was that I would never find a man, that a man wouldn't want to be with me. I mean, it was a lot of drama that was really all limiting beliefs that was made up in my head. And, you know, being in your mid 40s, 50s, 60s, wherever you are in this stage of life, what I learned is that it really doesn't matter because there is a great partner out there for you. But the secret is you gotta swing the bat. Like you, you gotta date, you gotta put yourself out there. It's not gonna just you know show up in your front doorstep. So I used to equate dating with baseball, like literally swinging the bat. And every time we would swing the bat, most of the time it was a foul ball or a strike. I mean, there was a lot of those. But I knew that as long as I kept swinging the bat, I would maybe get to first base, maybe second, maybe even third. And I knew eventually I'd hit that home run. And that's the attitude you gotta have. Remember, when you have a doubt of a date, just say, okay, that was a strikeout, that was a foul ball, who cares? This is about you, it's not about him. So keep swinging that bat. And I promise you, you will find a great partner. I've been with my boyfriend now for seven years. So keep swinging the bat. She's going to sink, Captain. But she can't sink. She's unsinkable. Fam, everybody heard that straight from this Coeen's own mouth. She literally gave up a 25 year marriage, swung a lot of bats, and I'm pretty sure there were several foul balls within those bats. And in the end, she got a boyfriend of seven years. In other words, after breaking up her family, the best she could do was get a guy who was basically sticking around but didn't give her the championship wedding ring. That's like trading in the uh, New England Patriots, Kansas City Chiefs, or the Tampa Bay Bucks for the Atlanta Falcons. You give up a championship team for a team that makes the playoffs, but never gets the Super Bowl ring. Oof, I think I hurt more of my male viewers' feels with that one. Anyway, this is again just another example of single women giving generic diet soda level of dating advice. Ladies, if you want out of your committed marriage to go out there and swing different bats of all colors and sizes just to get the grand prize of a boyfriend, you do you! I am sure your current feelings are the same feelings you will have for the rest of your life and not using any logic in your decision will give the greatest results of all. Go out there and slay. Moving on. So I wanted to share my story about my last date, y'all. I went out with this guy. He was about a half hour away from my hometown. So we met at a restaurant where, where I live. So we meet we're having dinner everything's going good you know we talk afterwards i'm one of those people that'll say hey text me let me know when you if when you get home safe so he ended up you know he texted me when he got home and said oh i'm home everything you know i'm okay and i said okay good night and i went to bed get up the next day i have a text from him that says good morning so i say good morning he said have a nice day I said have a nice day didn't text anymore throughout the day because I was doing stuff with my mama fam the setup of this story is a tad bit sus considering how much detail she is leaving out of it now ladies before you get upset with this gorilla for saying that let's not pretend women don't like to add details when they spin their tales of the cray cray dating type especially if the detail can paint her in a positive light now something tells me Parts of the story don't make her out to be the usual victim of the mean men, or he just didn't do anything that required the default female tactic. Shame. 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 Maybe this gorilla is being too pessimistic. It's just the patterns here don't match. Kind of like seeing a group of roughnecks passing up happy hour after a long shift. It just doesn't happen too often and makes you think something is not right. So, I get a text Sunday morning that said, hey, I'm on my way to Las Vegas. And I was like, Vegas? Like, which was odd because, you know, he never mentioned that he was going out of town or anywhere on Friday night when we had our date. So, I said, oh, well, that's good. Have fun. And then he replies, I'm getting married. And I said, you're, you're getting married? And he said, yes, I'm on my way to Vegas to get married. And then he said, 
do you want to come? And I said, to be what, the flower girl? Um, I said, well, best of luck to you. And that was the end of our date. Okay, fam, considering she left out way too much detail and jumped straight into the uh, I am getting married part, I'm sure my female viewers will probably say it was a nutty and weird story. My male viewers probably figured it out already. Do you ladies need me to tell you why he said that? How come? Tell me why? Say it! Say it! One of three possible reasons from least to most possible. Number three, he understood from the date he was friend zoned, so he played the part. Number two, he was getting creative in his next attempt, trying to tell her she was the possible bride, but it fell flat quickly. And number one, she probably played games with him on their date, and this was his way to play back at her. And it seemed to be effective since he is living in her head and videos rent free. Moving on. So, I met this guy on a dating app, and he told me he was interested in a long term relationship. And, um,. We instantly clicked. He started coming, taking me on dates. Um, I introduced him to my friends. Everybody really liked him. They said he was super nice, super great guy. I met some of his friends. Um, but, like, there were some red flags. The love bombing. He came on really strong. But I just thought it's because we had a really good connection. Anyways, um, he slowly, slowly started to show me different signs of himself ghosting, not showing up to dates, and then coming up with these really elaborate excuses as to why. One of them, oh, I was in the hospital, my back really hurt. Another one, oh, sorry, my friend's mom had a heart attack. I had food poisoning. It's like, oh, okay, did the dog eat your homework? So I just started to back away from him. And the more I backed away from him, the more he pushed himself onto me. Like he didn't want me to be with anybody else he didn't want to let me go and every time i tried to get away from him he came back it's like no things are going to change i'm so sorry this is what happened i do this and it's like he became totally like apologetic Ladies, every time stories like these come up, men always say the same accurate fact that is true in each and every story. And that is, you queens pick these men and get yourselves into these situations. Maybe because a part of you yearned for the uh, complications, or maybe not. Hey, if men can admit no one forced them into a marriage that cost them half of everything in the divorce, can you ladies take accountability for jumping into these real-life soap opera situations? No, 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 no. Rhetorical question, fam. We already knew the answer. It's evident with this queen who pointed out she had seen red flags early. Although, I admit she tried to work through some of them, which I give her credit for. And, you know, telling me all the things that I wanted to hear. So, anyways, um, it increasingly got to the point where I just couldn't take his lies. Like, I knew he was lying. So, I decided I was going to break things off. He didn't like that you know, continually trying to message me. So, you know, I was kind of like thinking, oh, maybe he is changing because he was like, you know, I've been going to therapy and I really think that you should give me another chance. I really want to make this work. You're the person I want to be with. Um, I want to marry you. I want us to really start over. And so like he kind of was wearing me down a bit, but I hadn't, um, I hadn't allowed him back into my life. Fam, I have said it before, Coweens don't want to hear the truth, even though they claim they do. Their actions clearly show they want comforting lies, and this Coween admitted she knew he was lying, and still said it was working on her. How much more evidence do you need? <laughs> Again, who mandated this Coween to listen to this guy? Oh, let me guess, it was the vibes. Ladies, you want to know why you can't find a good man? It's because just like this Coween, it's the bad boys who rattle your drama. Inducing feels are the ones you always go for. I'm starting to think the more complicated the man makes the relationship, the more you are attracted to it like moths to a flame. Fast forward, I get, um, this weekend, I get an email from his wife. And she told me, you know, um, I've seen messages between the two of you, and I'm his wife. This man has been 
telling me one thing, living two separate lives. Um, he's married, married with a two year old. I didn't know any of that. And um, she told me there's many others and this is a game for him, you know, come to find out he's a narcissist and he is preying on women like me. <sighs> this is dating in your forties. This is, this is what it's about. It has just been a really big eye open. I have to acknowledge the man she is talking about is a resourceful player. If all you ladies attack me for that one, hear me out. He is still married after doing this multiple times. That says he is a HVM. His wife doesn't want to lose him, and like all HVMs, women choose him over an average man. This wasn't a story about this decade post-wall Coeen getting played. This was a testimony of how a player juggles his side chick masterfully. I'm sorry, ladies, but my male viewers will feel little to no sympathy for this Coeen. They probably would say that's what you get for choosing the exciting player over the dull average guy. But hey, at least now you know so you don't make the same mistake twice, right? <laughs> I'm just saying, if you enjoy this audit, click on the video in the end screen for more content. If you would like to support the channel, please follow the link in the description to donate to our beer fund. Or like, subscribe, and share this video on other social media platforms. If you agree or disagree with anything about this audit, please let us know in the comments. I'm going to leave this audit right here. I'll see all of you in the next episode.